Greetings. I struggled thinking where to put this video, whether to put it in A and O, the Alpha and Omega, or an aha moment. And I think because of the content, we're going to put it in the aha moment side of things. Yesterday, I went into the silence the entire day. I didn't look at Facebook. I barely touched YouTube. And today I found it was two o'clock in the afternoon before I even came out of my room. I went meditating and um, I'm really struggling to put it into words what I was shown. So bear with me on that. What I actually want to talk about on this presentation is all about the external. It's and what it shows. The saying about real eyes realize the real lies. But when you consider all the external, not just the television screens, everything that is outside of yourself is a screen. It's a real to real, just like a film. There's your veil. The veil is just across here. It's everything beyond here is a veil. It is all external to you. But uh, where's, let's put this in the context of the external. Now, I think it's safe to say when you look at various things in science, there is a thing called energy, which converts. So an explosion will project a bullet or a projectile of some kind from the outward the energy from that explosion and the restriction of a barrel will send that projectile out. The energy has transferred. I think you get the idea anyway. <coughs> Obviously, you then also have a thing called the opposition. If it's a bullet, it's going to be slowed down eventually by the air. And it's dependent on the, how much energy is in the, explo the initial explosion with that analogy. I'm still trying to process all this, so please bear with me. So what I'm saying is here, when we talk about mad floods, Tataria, paradise, notice it's called paradise in California and what's happened to it. Well, that requires an energy. I'm thinking along the lines that these direct energy weapons credit is due <laughs> I'm thinking that what it's actually doing is basically acting like a switch and the energy is contained in the earth I think it's Jamie Lee has shown on a plain truth for you six or seven that a lot of these things burn from the inside out and it's coming from under the ground it's probably to do with most likely frequency and vibration and at the molecular level that brought down those two towers 19 years ago. And I think I'm pretty certain that if you were to plot all these great fires across the United States that you'll see there is a root or a pattern to all of this. I've not looked into this. This is just purely from feeling. And just like a hunter, we're dealing with a mindset of extreme ego to the point where, because it is on the external and the outside screen, it is right in your face. As I've suggested before, it would be something that is in plain sight, 
but at the same time so valuable. But they'd also want to make you pay to see it and tell you it's something else. I'm suggesting the orb, the scepter, the crown are part, if not all of this direct energy weapon. Exactly how it's used, I really don't know. I don't really want to know, to be, if truth be known. I'll come back to why, but it will be the sort of thing, but notice, I remember years ago going to the Tower of London with my grandmother, there was an IRA bomb scare, shock horror in the days before mobile phones. You just got the news report to say a bomb has gone off in London. My mother doesn't know what's happened any more than that. There's no way of contacting us, but still here. But with the crown jewels, you, you can't just linger in front of them. You have moved on. Are they even the genuine article? You see, if, you, if you're harnessing atmospheric electricity, which I think is proven beyond any doubt across many channels now, that if you're taking it away and you're making people pay for an energy created from destruction and from vampirism of sucking oil out of the earth, oil is so similar to blood, and then you've got spirit oil soil, but we have spiritual oil inside us. So these things are put in plain sight. You've got the atmospheric, atmospheric energy. The energy, I would suggest, is being used connected with a magnetic field that's in the sky, which also might explain why civil aircraft follow certain flight paths, perhaps. The positioning of oil fields, the positioning of drill, drilling in the earth. I'm sure this is all mapped out on, a, on, a, on an earth grid somewhere. And as above, so below, there is most likely going to be a sky grid. Well, there certainly is with astrology, for example. So what if clouded in mystery there are craft up there that you can't see? that are cloaked in some way, that can then every now and again be fired and set things off. But let's not dwell on the morbidity of this. I mean, we're talking, has been shown with melted brick and pretty much, if you look at a lot of the channels that show these things, a lot of what we think may have been giant tree stumps, some of them look to be structures of some kind of a colossal size but they all look melted and it would need something to create an enormous energy you would have to probably store that energy and then direct it as a beam in some way or use that beam to create a circuit that works pretty much like an arcing uh, type of device with that intense bright light, that intense heat. You only got to look back in whatever we call history. There's often explosions and bright and bright lights, fire and brimstone, and Sodom and Gomorrah come to mind. But not something to even worry about because I think has been shown in Paradise in California that it's over in a split second. But remember that you are not your body. It's a soul carrier of a spirit. So that's not going to hurt you any more than you could set fire to an angel. <laughs> it's, um, it's just fear. But yeah, the external is showing all these things in front of us and I'm not knocking any channel that has done tremendous research into this that just goes to give you more clues. But it's those important questions of, well, the energy. If the energy is not being given to us, it is being squirreled away. 
then presumably it's going to be used every now and again as well. So there's a few thoughts on that. My mind is all over the place. But remember, it comes down, really, I can show you this in four letters. N-I-C-U. You've got two eyes. They're the eyes of the deceiver that's looking out onto this screen. They're taking in things through these eyes. Because that is you. Because when you, like the letter U, because you, these are like your eyes, they're looking up. Except unlike the eye, which has a dot on the top of it, because that is this eye, you, I'm going to do it with this hand because I'm working in mirror. I must remember when you're going to see this on a video, it'd be the other way around. You have been knocked sideways and twisted. You see. Now here's your letter C. And we're in, being held by Admiralty Law. So it's all lost at sea as well. But when you see it from a higher perspective, not a, a better than thou perspective, but see, rise above all these illusions, you become N. Because you're looking at it, at it from a higher perspective. That's why I've said before, N is, is Lord. It's also in the capital letter, it rises, it moves to the right and falls and rises again. Just to reiterate that point. So these letters are shorthand glyphs. So be careful what you write as much as speak. Because remember, we're dealing with a, we're focusing on a minute particle that is solid, that 0.0001%. Well, all of this is not me. This is just something I mean. So I'd rather have my attention looking at just 1% of the, uh, out of the 99% will do to start with. I mean, even that is greater than the 0.0001% for a start. But the devil is always in the detail. <laughs> and this is part of what has been shown to me. But just switch off from all of it, really. Um, by all means, do look at the external. It's going to show you some horrific pictures, though. And faced with, just say you were living in paradise, <laughs> in California, the irony of that, eh? Well, what could you do about it? It's over in a split second, I should think. So is there really anything to worry about? And I'm going to talk from a place of experience here. You're, um, you've already experienced death at the moment of birth. As Neville Goddard says, do you realise you, you have died already? You're not dead, but you've died. Death is just... The only way I can describe death is the best sleep ever. I've experienced it twice. And, oh, what a wonder... I'm not even talking about going into the light or not going into the light. I'm just talking about being in death. I have memories of being in the womb. It's not dissimilar. I know what the void is like. I have the experience of being in the void. Black velvet, an absolute bliss. And it's outside of time. This is the material that tiny, tiny speck of material that the photons behave differently as to whether they're observed or not observed. 
the communication is actually all in the feeling. It's not even in words. It's a, it's a frequency, but what about that 99.999%? Think what we're missing out by focusing on the material. What about the rest of the atom? What about the waves? I mean, how many times are we, this year especially, first wave, second wave, now talk of a third wave, and I think even a fourth wave. How many waves do you want? Just say wave by bye to it all. And it's like, yeah, I've seen this story so many times over and over again. And um, so what? <laughs> really? And that is it. So what? What is a, is power? Sow seeds with good intentions. I mean, it's not actually a lot when you consider it. If 99 plus percent of everything is so much greater and so much more, it can't take a lot to change this. But maybe that is the balance as well. Maybe you need that opposition same as everything else that's shown in nature. The bird or anything that flies needs the opposition of air to be able to fly. The fish needs the water and the currents in the water. We've got currents in the air, thought currents. But if you're using the currents in the water, that's the opposition to the fish for it to be able to swim. Same as us, if we go into the water and we learn to swim. It's all revealed to us in so many ways is just how we look at things. Often people will start a sentence with, you see, the thing is, well, that's the whole point. <laughs> Most of it is no thing at all, <laughs> or not in a sense of a thing that we can call solid, which the reality has a 99% perception. Um, and that's what's holding it all together, really. But, uh, yeah, it's a little bit... It's still processing within, within me. I've said before this is a personal diary, but it's a very public personal diary because... It's lovely to get some of the feedback from you about some of you have tried doing the counting down for a hundred to one as a, a way to practice getting into the idea and impressing that idea of meditating. Start doing it so it becomes natural in the same way as when you learn to drive a car. You think back to when you, that first driving lesson to now, regardless of how many years, if you've reached an acceptable standard they passed you and then you start perfecting it through practice but you don't think about changing gear you don't think about looking in the mirror you don't think about anything you just do it and the, the car is also very interesting its development look how many distractions they now put in front of you you're not just driving you've got heating you've got a radio you've got a cd player or whatever um You've even got things on the backs of the headrests for the kids so they can be kept looking at the real to real screen rather than looking at the bigger picture. But it's still all a screen anyway. So um, it's just seeing it for what it is. It's like it's talk of compulsory this, compulsory that. And so what? I think the best mantra in a way is just take the professor arthur proton character um the actor in the big bang theory his name has gone again but uh, i put a link up a few videos back and it's just stop it all those fears and things stop it if you know what you're doing the damage you're doing to yourself by feeling fear because all this dialogue, when the dialogue is going on through feeling. So it's about how you feel about anything. 
I mean, how do you feel about that bright yellow jacket in the clothing store? Would you be seen dead in it? Um, does it suit you? Is that you, what you want to portray? Is it a conscious decision or something in your unconscious that's deciding whether you want that or not want, wanting that? Have you been sucked in and gone through the entrance? Have you been entranced by the adverse of the adverts with that? It's all about getting you to spend something.